Good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday the 11th of June. It is also the feast day of Corpus Christi, Thanksgiving for the institution of Holy Communion. And uh, it is always uh, this feast day on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, an opportunity to give thanks for the gift of the Eucharist. And, uh, and certainly in pre-Reformation days, this would be a major feast day. There would be processions of the Blessed Sacrament and a big holiday uh, and feast for everyone. Um, and today, uh, as we meet and gather and pray at a time when uh, most uh, people cannot actually access Holy Communion and be able to partake properly, uh, it may seem strange to to be uh, having this as a feast day but I think it probably gives an opportunity to reflect on what the Eucharist means to us and what we are indeed missing. Even those of us who can um, uh, take communion, um, I miss the being able to do so with uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So it's an opportunity to give thanks for the gift of the Eucharist and perhaps reflect on what it might mean to us. So a few good mornings to Anne Blanford, to Mike Buick, to Angie Stott, uh, to Angela Cameron, and I think there are a few others there, but uh, um, apologies uh, if I uh, have missed you off. As we start the day, we'll if you've got a candle with you in your little place wherever you are then do light that and as we welcome in this day and open our hearts to the light of Christ. O oh God creator of light at the rising of your sun this morning let the greatest of all lights your love rise like the sun within our hearts. Amen. So let me just get the order of service forgot to do that before we started as we say good morning to Sue and to Adele and to Lizzie Whittle if you've got the uh, order for morning prayer in front of you then uh, we open with the opening sentence and uh, response The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is cl close to those who trust in him. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day is before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Time for our Psalm of the Week, uh, which we say each day, Psalm 16 this week. And if you do have with you the version that's put up on the Facebook page, uh, then do uh, join in as we pray this together, otherwise um, do uh, listen and pray in your hearts. Psalm 16 Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land. On those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land, Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. 
I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fail. Wherefore my heart is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So our Bible reading uh, today is the set reading for Corpus Christi for morning prayer. It's quite a challenging reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, in particular as it mentions uh, you know, the ways that the people of Israel were felled in the wilderness and uh, perhaps uh, and I think our understanding of who God is and how he operates uh, thank has changed in the interim thank God and uh, that sense of him using uh, uh, plagues and uh, felling people in order to make an example uh, I think we've gone away from that understanding now uh, and uh, that's not in his nature and yet perhaps as we uh, look back on uh, the, that and reflect on that in a time of pandemic as uh, people are still dying and infections still rising across the world. Uh, uh, that sense of um, you know, what, uh, what does it do to us? What does that testing, uh, what sort of society and people will emerge? And in particular, there's a sort of key line that uh, I hope uh, in a sense that God is faithful that you'll hear he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. So uh, from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 10. I do not want you to be unaware brothers and sisters that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with them, most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out, so that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's a little reflection uh, on the Eucharist 
from uh, an Anglican writer called Gregory Dix in the 20th century. Was ever another command so obeyed? For century after century, spreading slowly to every continent and country and among every race on earth, this action has been done in every conceivable human circumstance, for every conceivable human need from infancy and before it to extreme old age and after it, from the pinnacles of earthly greatness to the refuge of fugitives in the caves and dens of the earth. Humanity has found no better thing than this to do for kings at their crowning and for criminals going to the scaffold, for armies in triumph or for a bride and bridegroom in a little country church, for the proclamation of a dogma or for a good crop of wheat, for the wisdom of the parliament of a mighty nation or for a sick old woman afraid to die, for a schoolboy sitting in examination or for Columbus setting out to discover America, for the famine of whole provinces or for the soul of a dead lover. One could fill many pages with the reasons why humanity has done this and not tell a hundredth part of them. And best of all, week by week and month by month, on a hundred thousand successive Sundays, faithfully, unfailingly, across all the parishes of Christendom, the pastors have done this just to make the holy, common people of God. Let us pray. And let's pray for the Church as we give thanks for that gift of the Eucharist. And remember that we are separated from our brothers and sisters and not able to participate in communion. We give thanks for the spiritual communion that sustains and unites us. And pray that one day soon we can all share together around the Lord's table. As we prepare to reopen our church buildings we pray for guidance and wisdom and the perseverance to make that possible so that the doors may be open for people to come in and pray and offer their hearts to God. We pray today for those residents of care homes and the staff who work in them the anxiety and fearfulness there. And we give thanks for those who seek to enable all who are part of those homes to live as life as fully as possible under the current circumstances. We pray for those who long to visit elderly parents and relatives We pray that those doors may be open again once more soon, safely. In our local community, we give thanks for all those who continue to volunteer for those connections between neighbours and old and young that have been made. And pray that that spirit of neighbourliness may continue and enable that sense of community to flourish. In the village of Webmore in particular, we pray for the new housing developments and those who are working on those and those who are perhaps preparing to buy or rent there, those moving into the village, that they may find here a good home, be welcomed and 
be able to contribute themselves. We pray for the people of our own communities and parishes, and today for the people of Allerton and Christchurch. And so we pray today for Molly Pierce, for Dot and David Puddy, for Nina and Steve, James and Jack Redding, for Alison Smith, for Fiona and Johnny Torren Spence, for Danny and his family, for Helen and Jack, for Richard and Shirley Turner, for Georgina Wainwright and her family, and for Alan Williams, and for the folk of Christchurch and Thiel, we pray today for Peter Stott and his family, for Noreen and Philip Stott, for Colin Tucker, for Neil Turner and Helen Stebbins, for Malcolm Watkins, for Lizzie Whittle, and for Janet Wright, for Janet in her bereavement as she prepares for Derek's funeral next week. And so let's just keep a time of quiet we offer this day to God and open our hearts to him and pray for the needs of the world. Here's the collect for Corpus Christi. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And together we pray the two prayers towards the end of the morning prayer service. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings, and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us, and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, good morning to Mary, good morning to Elizabeth, good morning to Karin, good morning to Venetia, good morning to Helen and Neil and others who 
uh, are part of this congregation, whether live or um, part of it a little later on today. Uh, lots of work uh, happening behind the scenes at the moment to enable our church buildings to reopen again, uh, hopefully on Monday of next week, um, some perhaps each day, some perhaps uh, just a few days a week, uh, some uh, will uh, maybe just for a few hours a day uh, supervise. So bear with us on that one and uh, I'm hoping that uh, today uh, there'll be some more communication about that so you all know what's going on and we'll be able to open those doors and uh, enable our communities once more to come in and to pray and to be still and hopefully to know God's presence. Uh, so uh, we'll meet tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for our usual time of daily prayer. Uh, tomorrow uh, we've got another feast day. There have been a lot this week and it's the feast day of St Barnabas, uh, the, the colleague of Paul. Uh, so we will remember uh, him and give thanks for him tomorrow. In the meantime, everyone take care and God bless. <laughs>